Hello, friends. This is Mrs. Lamont. I've been thinking a lot about storytelling lately. As you know, I love to write stories. I also love to tell stories. And what I'm realizing is that sometimes I don't write a whole story down. Sometimes I make up a story in my head and I just like to share it with people. But I also like to remember it because maybe I want to share it with someone else a week from now. And the way I do this is I don't write down the story word for word. I just write down some key words that will help me remember big moments in the story and help me string it together each time. And what's really fun about this is that every time I tell the story, it changes a little, which I think is really interesting. So I'd like to share this process with you. And I'm going to start out by just telling you a story that I just, I just made up in my head. And it's a story about a, a puppy named Panda, and it's called Panda's Bell. So here's the story. A puppy named Panda just learned something new. She was very proud. Her family, who she had just come to live with, taught her that every time she needed to go outside for a walk, all she had to do was ring the bell that was hanging from the back doorknob. The family had hung a little silver jingle bell on the back doorknob, and Panda learned that she could just take her nose and move that jingle bell back and forth until it made a beautiful jingly jangly sound, and then someone in her family would come and take her for a walk. Well, one day, Panda got up early, and she really had to go for a walk, so she went to the back door. But there was no bell. The bell was gone. Panda did not know what to do. She was very concerned. She looked everywhere for the bell. She ran around the house and looked under every cushion and behind every book, everywhere she could find, and there was no bell. So she decided she needed to do something about it. She was a resourceful puppy, and she said, you know what? I need to make the sound of the bell. So she sat herself down and she practiced. First, she started out with little kind of whiny puppy noises or little tiny barks, but eventually she worked that sound into something that sounded very jingly jangly, very much like that bell. And she went up to her family and she barked in a bell-like sound. She had her own distinctive voice and they heard it and they loved it and they knew what it meant and they took her out. So Panda started using her voice instead of the bell and it worked great and she was very happy. Then one day, just a couple days later, she saw the little girl who was in her family. She was practicing her tap dancing. And as the girl started dancing, she heard a sound. It wasn't just the taps. It was the jingly bell. The little girl had taken the bell and tied it to her tap shoe because she liked the sound of the bell when she tap danced. Panda thought this was lovely. She was happy that she had rediscovered the bell. But she realized that she liked her own voice even better. Soon the little girl was done tap dancing, and she hung the bell back on the doorknob. But Panda never rang the bell again to go out. She used her own voice instead. But every time she passed by that doorknob, she thanked the bell, because it was the bell that had given Panda her voice. The end. So that's my little story, and I want to show you a way that I can remember that story so that I can tell it to people over and over if I want to. So this is what I would do. I wouldn't write down the whole thing. I would just write down some key words. The first word that I would probably write down is panda. I mean, I don't think I would remember. I don't think I would forget, sorry, panda's name, but just in case. I would write down panda, and then I would write down bell, because those two things together would help me remember that I need to introduce the reader to my character, Panda, and I need to introduce the reader to that important idea that Panda rings the bell when she needs to go out. And then I would write down the word gone to remember that day when Panda discovered the bell wasn't there. Then maybe I would put down the word search because Panda searched for that bell and couldn't find it. And the next word I would write to remind myself would be voice. Because Panda, even though there was no bell, found her voice, found the bell in her voice. And that was a really important part of the story. And then maybe I would write down tap shoes 
because that's how Panda found the bell again. And that seems important because you want to kind of know what happened to that bell. I think as the, as the listener, I would want to know what happened to that bell. And then I think the last thing I would write down is thank you, because I really like the part about how Panda thanks the bell every time for giving her voice. So that's what I would do. And then I could go back through these things and I feel like I could recreate my story again. And it might be different. It might be very different. But I think I could come back to that story and still give a similar kind of version of Panda Spell to the next person I told the story to. So maybe you want to try that. If you have a story in your head and you want to remember it so you can tell it over and over to different members of your family, try this. See if it works for you. Most of all, have fun making up those stories. It's one of my favorite things to do. And I would love to hear more, more of your stories when you, um, when you start creating them. I'm sure you're doing a lot of it right now. So take care. Thanks for listening. Bye.